Billy is a graduate of the California Institute of Technology and received his doctorate in medicine from the University of Pennsylvania in 1942. He's worked extensively in various research fields of science, including biophysics, biophysics, neurophysiology, electronics, and neuroanatomy. Dr. Lilly has done many years of study and research on solitude, isolation, and confinement, and is a qualified psychoanalyst. He spent 12 years working on research on dolphin-human relationships, including communication, and two years at the Epsilon Institute, Big Sur. California as a group leader, resident, and associate in residence. He spent eight months in Chile investigating and participating in the modern esoteric school and the mystical tradition. Okay, well that's, that's, a, that's a fact. I'd like to just say a few words about how tonight came about. I read the center of the cyclone, as many of you have, I'm sure, and decided it'd be really nice to have an isolation tank of my own. So I was uh, dreaming about how I was going to build it, and I heard that John Lilly was in town through some grapevine. Anyway, I went over and saw him and talked to him, and thought it would be really nice if he could speak. And he was generous enough to offer to speak for free as this benefit for the community school. So I'd like to introduce Dr. John Lilly. Lily. My son Charles is in the audience. <laughs> Tonight we'll go from zero to one to two to all in many fine steps. To begin in the void, we'll have 30 seconds of silence, which I want you to say the letter R, and then 30 seconds after that, nothing. So go with me. Consciousness without an object, from Merrill Wolf, wakens itself, looks upon itself, starts rotating, creates a vortex in the opposite direction, facing itself from the mirror. The female appears, the male appears, and thus begins the universe on a minuscule scale. Gradually, galaxies spin off, black holes develop regenerate to white dwarfs. So we go from nothing to everything. And eventually, we will probably go back to nothing. With what joy, we do not know yet. People often ask, of what use is bliss, Ananda, going to the void? First of all, it's a rest. Best rest you've ever had in your life. You can get in the tank, float in your Epsom salts on your back, Nothing to do, nobody to bother you, no terminus to your trip, and come out totally refreshed. You realize that your initial fears are unreal, you created them yourself, and you discarded them yourself. Your disbeliefs are as powerful as your beliefs. From that point on, you command your own position in the tank. You self meta program, create new universes, look at the ones that are here, all the societies that are beyond ours, below ours, inside ours, inside theirs, all the non-material universes, 
theoretical, abstract, mystical, whatever. Trouble is, I'm not a guru, I'm not a teacher. This leaves me with one disciple who's sitting here at Boston. She says she's getting independent. <laughs> she's learning how to go to nothing. Remember, nothing is the escape from everything or anything all the time. You can shuttle off into nothing. You don't need a tank. You can close the bathroom door, put a rug against the door, turn off the light, get into the hot water in the tub, pour enough Epsom salts in so you float, <laughs> and go sensorily deprived into your ananda, your bliss, forever, eternal. In five minutes, you gain more than you gain with 12 hours of sleep on the best beauty form mattress. I love Aspen. Last time I was here, 1958, I told Siggy Engel I want to ski from the top of Aspen Summit to the bottom like an old man. He said, what do you mean? I said, without a, stall, without a stop, a stall, or a fall from top to bottom. I said, okay, give me three days. We did it in two. My son Charles, who was here, raced me to the bottom. I beat him by ten minutes. <laughs> I offered him ski instruction. He wouldn't take it. <laughs> He's now in the Glenwood Springs Carbondale area rescue group, fire group, and so on. Doing a magnificent job. I'm very proud of him. He's also keeping a family history. He's found many people I didn't even know existed. There'll probably be more that will show up. We wish to come to Aspen next year. If anyone knows of a house with about three bedrooms, so we can get to the <laughs> We'll be here all summer. We hope to bring some far-out intellects here. Heinz von Forrester, your own Richard Feynman, and various other people of this ilk who can disturb you in a very pleasant way. We hope by that time to have enough tanks going so we can handle quite a number of people at once, and let's avoid boring one another. Apparently, God created the universe because he was looking at the void and himself and saying, well, well, maybe we ought to have some, something around here that looks evil. So he said, let's make dichotomies. So dichotomies appeared, and evil slash good was the first distinction. Out of nothing came evil good. Then came God himself, who said, Ah, good and evil, let's make, to make some matter. Have the matter throw energy around, and we'll have a few quanta, and then maybe I can split off my own intelligence, put it out there in those funny-looking things called humans. Then we'll add some dolphins in order to pepper and salt that sea that we created. But this confines it to one planet, of which there seem to be half the stars of our galaxy seem to contain these things probably intelligent, communicating life forms well advanced beyond ours. My own hope is that we go to a pure life form. One of the problems of purification, of course, is that if you excite it too much, it cracks. You crystallize your ego, crystallize your purity of your essence, and away it goes, vibrating on a common frequency, even as the R that you all sang here earlier. If you sang that R earlier, this whole building would probably collapse when you got in synchrony. Your side bands would shake the bricks and your main thing would throw the roof. And these tape recorders couldn't take the load. Bear that in mind next time you're scolding a child, a dog, or that goat that's been eating your cans in the backyard. Aspen is a ecology that permits us to look at it as if it's the whole world. We have white, black, brown, gray people here. We hope someday to have dolphins here. <laughs> so they can talk back and demand their rights. We have a judge here, Judge Went, John Went, who I'm sure will go to the Supreme Court, plead the case for the dolphins, 
to bring a dolphin along in a delphinomobile who will argue his own species in front of the judges. Now that we can get Nixon and put him in a tank, <laughs> we'll put Ford into a Lincoln, we'll have the country in a state of Ananda within the next three years at least. Lord help us. The entropic, negentropic balance will be disturbed mightily because everything will go negentropic. The atmosphere will heat up and some lonely star wayfarer will see us as a supernova. Of course, that's an illusion. We're really a black hole disappearing into ourselves. <laughs> as Richard Feynman misquoted, said, <laughs> each of us is a vessel of certainty plowing through the deep seas of indeterminacy. <coughs> Beneath us, at 10 to the minus 33rd centimeters, indeterminacy rules. I'm misquoting John Wheeler via Feynman. Intellectual Digest, 1970. The important thing here, of course, is not the summer, it's the winter. It's the skiing. It's the physics of skiing. It's getting down that mountain by yourself. With double-ended skis, you can do it in both directions. <laughs> Rotating, windmilling, or worm turning. The worm turn I was shown last winter by someone in California. It's a vertical axis made horizontal. The skis go alongside your body. And at high speed, you turn. <laughs> and you're right. Worm turns lead to wormholes in the universe. <laughs> you better watch out. If you do one of these turns at too high a speed, you will disappear and reappear in some other universe. You may be underwater <laughs> or in somebody's statue in that other place. <laughs> so watch out. Or you may be just another wormhole, worm turning that universe. <laughs> Dr. Feynman's son is here. He criticizes speaker, speakers for not connecting one sentence or another with logic. <laughs> <laughs> we try to do no logic. It has five values. True, false, as if true, as if false, and meaningless. <laughs> Everything I say is a lie, therefore it's meaningless. So the connection between my sentences has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. I'm a digital computer faking an analog. <laughs> As with bio. Water seems to be essential to our type of thinking. We're very vaporous. Sometimes we go a solid state. There are nine different levels of solid state. To get enough pressure, temperature, and so forth, we can create ice that's eternal. Ice nine, you can be seated. <laughs> According to our friend from the uh, cat's cradle, throw in a crystal into the sea, we all disappear into ice nine. That leaves us in a black hole, of course. <laughs> this constant without an object doesn't realize that ice nine existed before it thought it shouldn't. Is that enough connection? <laughs> Connectivity in the brain between cells is incredibly important. We have 10 billion cells in our cortex, 10 billion cells in our cerebellum, but we're not the best on the planet. The dolphins and porpoises come up to us, and the whales pass us. Sperm whale is the biggest, 10,000 grams. In other words, 20 billions of cells in his cortex, 20 billion of cells in his cerebellum. Connectivity, 10 to 1. Glial to neuronal ratio, 5 to 1. As soon as you realize that you have computers on the planet larger than your own, you go, oh. <laughs> Suddenly you realize that they are being programmed by masses of minds larger than theirs, and they program us. They program us to kill them. Why? To demonstrate to us that if we go on doing this, we can destroy the universe. There's those guys up in the engine room in the universe, about five of them sitting there, and there's a big red button on the wall. And one of them says, 
See that button over there? It says, don't push or you'll destroy the universe. So a guy gets a funny look on his face and starts towards the button. And somebody shouts, stop him. And they said, oh, he's done it 10,000 times before. <laughs> you who live on Red Mountain, look out for that. It's a costly button. Of course, those over on the North Slope on the ski with lift one can uh, unheat Red Mountain every winter and avoid this or have a repetitive destruction every summer. You get somebody like me here and it'll all disappear in a week. I guarantee it. So find that house for me and Tony. We'll bring enough people here to destroy the universe for you. <laughs> Two other friends of ours, the Pagels, Heinz and Elaine, insist that we come here next summer. We want to get enough fellowships in addition to the free house so that we can get this universe destruct group going for the whole summer. Then by winter we'll have good skiing. There will be an endless down slope, no need for the lifts, the economy will go to pieces, Ford will be in his Cadillac driving a Lincoln, and down the hill we all go together. The economy will go to pot, and the more we smoke, the merrier we'll be, whether it's from Thai or Columbia. <laughs> I don't want to forget my plug for LSD. <laughs> Sandoz of Switzerland says they'll send two kilograms the instant we destroy the universe. <laughs> their board of governors agreed to this in spite of the fact that they'll lose all their profits. They say, what are profits in the face of nothing? <laughs> and of course, we have a new archangel hidden in a molecule. We want to change your molecular configuration for 20 minutes go on a trip like nobody's ever seen before, shoot yourself up with ketamine. 20 minutes on the dot. And I don't have to be there to talk you into it. Just dive in the tank with ketamine in you, and away you go. You can create anything you want. Remember, you're crowding other universes, but they're interpenetrating, and you don't have to worry about that too much, especially the logical connections. <laughs> One thing that holds the universe together is humor. <laughs> humor, independence, and integrity. Pastor without an object made a mistake. It defined all of those before it defined itself. And suddenly love came into the picture, and glup, everything went together. So we got condominiums in the end, Aspen. But I know your mayors are fighting this, and I applaud them gratefully. No more condominiums. Let's put in trees, trails, and lifts. And nothingness. And let's ski on the skating rink in Aspen. We can use horses to pull us. My friend Mary Frank at Advocates Ranch is breeding and raising thoroughbreds at altitude, approximately 8,000 feet, three quarters of an atmosphere. They should be geniuses when they get to sea level. <laughs> of course, if you feed them coke or cocaine like the Peruvian Indians, get them addicted, they'll go like the wind. <laughs> but don't tell the Japanese or they'll create an artificial horse. <laughs> of course, we're all robots. I'm, I'm being run by the cosmic computer myself. They put a lot of energy in here at night. Watch out, you may burn up. So will I. I'm just a channel. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Tony says, that's for sure. <laughs> I never do. Recently, I've been exploring the limits of self, consciousness, consciousness without an object with ketamine. And there's a blackout point, about 250 milligrams of ketamine in your bloodstream. Wham, out you go. You can't avoid the void with that. <laughs> Laughter in a molecule. Park Davis, Detroit, Michigan, should be congratulated. As well as those foreigners, Eli Lilly, in Indianapolis, Indiana, who are not related to me. Even distantly, my son says. 
They came from Sweden. Lia, meaning little. How small can you get? <laughs> Lia Hummer. Lia Hummer is a small lobster. In other words, a crayfish. And if you go to Sweden, you drink 10 cc's of pure C2H5OH with each claw. And out you go. <laughs> That's how Nobel Prizes are created. We have one Nobel Prize winner here tonight, Dickie Feynman, for his quantum electrodynamics, describing the universe as if it was a blackboard. <laughs> He gave the Caltech address this time. I finally convinced him he didn't need any notes. He tried to bring two, two ideas together and connect them in the abattoir of his son's thinking that everything had to be connected by logic. And he came up with the cargo cult science, for which I am the inventor. Passion without an object decided that he needed an airplane, a place to land it, and some natives, so they all were created at once. As soon as they did that, bright beads, cloth, and various minerals appeared, and trading started. Then the airplanes went away, the natives started making their local airplanes out of the leftover Reynolds aluminum wrap, <laughs> saran wrap to hold it all together, and a bit of the fossilized fuel that we all wasted last winter. To keep it going, they puffed it up by eating chocolate and farting into the dirt. <laughs> Swami Mukti Nanda adored us and adored us at Snowmass, that artificial place over there, which doesn't have anything to do with Aspen, and stole its name from the old Snowmass down the hill, below uh, Irving Beers Ranch, and below Mary K. Frank's Ranch, 835 acres, my lord, what a price. The Mediterranean coast sells for $85,000 an acre. The Virgin Islands Coast sells for $85,000 an acre. That isn't why I sold the Dolphin Lab there. <laughs> it was a concentration camp and I lost. There was an Armenian by the name of Sapien who sued me and we had to pay him, according to the jury, $70,000, but he only got twenty. And he cleaned at me as he was leaving the courtroom and said, we won. And I said, you've been riding your ass, doing nothing for three years, you can't possibly make that up with $20,000. He didn't believe me. I don't know where he is now. I hope he went out. <laughs> Tony said tonight that I should not talk too short a time. She said I should obtrude my presence in yours, like a big fart from the earth. I've changed my mind. <laughs> I knew I could oh. push and squeeze her and get some milk out of her sooner or later. Oh, great. <laughs> I think I'll take a glass of water after that. <laughs> She's an old friend of Alan Watts. He's probably watching us and laughing. <laughs> He's the official God laugher. Formalism. He said nothing but form. There is no substance. So he took too much of C2H5OH, even as she does, and I did the other night. She said, I made a disgrace of myself to the Society of Aspen by drinking too much white wine. I said, <laughs> I was trying to convert it to ketamine. There wasn't enough nitrogen around. It was an airy fairy sort of thing to do because N2 was everywhere, of course. We didn't have that electric spark that Faustin had to do. Do you want me to continue, darling? No, I think you, you said enough, darling. Why don't we have some questions from the audience? <laughs> you see, she wants to make this into a gentleman and explorer. <laughs> From nothing to everything, 
Well, easy lesson. I present you with all. <laughs> Antoinette Lena Lilly. How do you do, everyone? She's not a Sicilian. She's not an Italian. She's an Albanian. And watch out, they're cannibals. They used to be, my dear, and they were headhunters, not cannibals. So be careful of yours. <laughs> yes, a boss. <laughs> I've lost it twice with you. She did artificial resuscitation on me when I fell in the swimming pool due to hypostatic anemia, standing up too fast when I was too hot. <laughs> As we were going up in the helicopter, after she the screamed for Will Curtis. She screamed for Will Curtis, who came down. Two days before, in the National Observer, she'd read out of doom a mouth to mouth resuscitation. Blood and stuff came out of me. And Will Curtis came. They called the sheriff. He brought the oxygen with the fire department. They got a helicopter and scared the hell out of the horses. <laughs> Took me over to the hospital. I woke up during the trip, saw this aluminum plate over my head, heard the whirring, and thought I was in the year 3001. <laughs> got to the hospital, there were three green gnomes sticking things into me in various ways. I figured, I figured the 3001, they should have learned more than that. <laughs> Brain electrodes next. So then my doctor decided to do a pain killing trip on me with various things. He gave me the injections and I got all sorts of hematomas and abscesses and various things in my hips, which are too big and feminine anyway. At which point, they, due to the intervention of my friend, the psychiatrist uh, Weininger, who came in and talked very sternly to this doctor, a very young doctor. At which point the doctor gave me a placebo. He <laughs> said, your pain is only psychic. So we now have a new book. It's called Pain, Weininger, and the Doctor. It'll have ketamine poured over it. Numerous doses, so I advise you to eat the book before you read it. <laughs> The FDA is objecting to this. They say we should save the ketamine for the swings for the kiddies. And that nobody over the age of six should have it. Well, they've allowed those over 60 to have it. I'm reaching 60 next January. So, diabetics, geriatrics, pediatrics, all can have ketamine, but you can't. Unless you go to Vietnam and get shot up. And then they'll shoot you up with ketamine, and away you'll go into extraterrestrial, extraterritorial, extra territorial realities within your ER, step in the tank up at the community school for which this benefit is being held, and you can disappear into a moneyless zero full of ketamine and meet those other creatures who created all this and who, of whom we are the robots and they are the game players. They exist on some one of the planets of surrounding Jupiter, there's another one that uh, will get so pure to crystallize below ammonia, methane, and so forth. What a stink. And back we'll come, make an Earth, because we need an Earth. Mars is too hot. Resembles Aspen in the summer. It's up to you now, darling. Questions? <laughs> What is ketamine? In 1958, the Park Davis people discovered a molecule which they subsequently named Theranil. They got it into the government, into Chemical Warfare Department, CIA. If you OD on this, you go out for seven days. You're looking at this robotic body. You're running from up someplace up there. It's a very strange reality. You compress your external reality, your internal reality, and your extraterrestrial reality all in one and it's a funny trip you make talks like this one <laughs> very strange it's been investigated at UCLA and freaked out the whole staff and yet it's the most commonly used anesthetic on this planet okay, very popular a lot of you probably had it and didn't know it came back from your trips and you, we call it a nirvanogenic. It guarantees samadhi whether you like it or not. <laughs> Chemically induced samadhi, Patanjali, 
जन्म असारी तापा मंत्र समारी सिद्धाया संस्कृत ग्रेटफुल संस्कृत स्मिथ ट्रांसलेटेड एस the powers the psychic powers you know the psychic pain bit are created by means of birth by which a genetic code all the chromosome dna rna stuff or by light containing herbs asadi pot amanita muscaria which is all over the world psilocybin mushrooms and the pure sando stuff of which i had 10 grams and sent back to them i owed it on the first The hands of a friend, Dr. Wooden. So we go on from molecule to molecule, changing our molecular configuration, <coughs> hoping that we can uh, have our essence escape. Well, you can have your essence escape without all this nonsense. Just climb in the tank. Next question. Yes. When was the last time you used ketamine? You see me now in ketamine. I'm thoroughly anesthetized. I'm sitting up on the top of Aspen Peak, taught me this happy idiot talk. <laughs> the logical connection between here and there is whatever is in the way. <laughs> Tachyon, quarks, subquarks. Get inside the quark, and you'll have a great time. <laughs> It's still running. Oh, uh, I'd like to say that the ketamine uh, are being used by a lot of psychiatrists. Uh, Beginning to be used, and uh, John, well, we'll is doing, that in John is doing the research on it that we certainly hope that no one else has to do. <laughs> <laughs> My best friends are MDs. I've got ten of them that are shooting it up. They and their wives. They're not quite as hostile as Tony. <laughs> I warn you, though, if you take it with a full stomach, you're like all the hollow vesicles of which you're built. It'll empty it right on the spot, no matter what's in front of you. Even her yin yang rug. Have I done this? <laughs> Only one in the family. <laughs> no, I really think that John's work with the Kevin is very, very uh, important. I really do. But it, uh, when you're going, takes a monitor like her. When you're examining limits of any kind. You just don't know. It's a very useful tool, only in the sense that you can examine your thought process in a very uh, fast way. It's a 20-minute kind of thing, and psychiatrists are beginning to find it's incredibly useful. You notice he's running backwards, very fast, trying to keep the Japanese from thinking up the ketamine molecule out of the serum molecule. But as you <laughs> When you uh, experiment with any of these things, the, the fascinating thing is that you never know exactly where it's going to go, and you have to live in indeterminacy, literally. And that's difficult for it's anyone. Amazing how we got that lesson across her. But my Bank of America card won't believe me. <laughs> Keep making it certain. Here's one for fifty-one seventy-three. Because that's really what Medical we're trying expense. to do. Medical expense, ketamine. <laughs> Yes. Is there a different name that ketamine is called that I might have heard? Ketalar, ketaject. Oh, this probably you know half the people in the audience that have experienced it, but they have a large dose that so that they're uh, they're completely out, so they can be operated on. A friend of ours had an abortion on it. She was coming back and especially to look at what's happening coming back. And she looked at this little Negro nurse who was standing by her, and she said, "Boy, have I been places, all sorts of planets and everything else." The Negro nurse says, "Yeah, you would let it hit the black market." <laughs> well, the useful part about it, I really would like to say that there is a scientific um, way of using this. It really is. Uh, the research that we did with LSD was difficult because when you take a hallucinogen, you're out like for eight. Nine, ten hours, and you've been to very a contract, far a places. But <laughs> when you take a very short kind of trip like that, as you're coming back, you can actually see how you need certain uh, sections of reality to come to, down to this logic system that we use uh, on this level of consciousness. 
Now, on other levels of consciousness, there really is a completely different logic system, as you know, so many people are experiencing, and that's why these, this new language is developing. So uh, the doctors that are using the, uh, the psychiatrists, it should be done certainly with a psychiatrist, that are using the ketamines are finding it uh, really incredibly useful because when you come back, you have to see how you need these things to uh, stay in this logic system. And that's there, incredibly useful to someone who's never seen it. There was a professor of psychology in 1900 that wrote, there is a, the filmiest of screens that separates consensus reality from other realities, we do not know how the screen is constructed. I say this is the screen of words, the logical connection, the words as if. It's the simulations of reality, not the experience of reality. The only real thing is reality's experience. When you reduce that to zero and become conscious without an object, you can get the screen of reality itself out of your way, and Maya disappears, Prakriti disappears, and the Atman becomes manifest. Manifest meaning to masturbate by hand. <laughs> it's always interesting, you see. I've never, we've never had a talk like this. This is the first time. <laughs> far out. But how people handle that logic is always uh, fascinating. You call that logic, my love? Well, it's just a different set of logic. <laughs> Pardon? What's it like for you to come back? I don't. They send me back. <laughs> what drugs have you used in your studies with dolphins? I only used LSD. And they all had good trips. <laughs> they, they, could go, occur. they go along in the surface and point their, turn on their sonar and look for the bottom and it disappears. Just the way the floor does. You have to go bang like that to try to find the floor. <laughs> Yes. Do you know why you dropped out of the Erica training program? I didn't. I'm still in the Eureka training, if that's what you want to call the universe. Eureka training was a beautiful place for me to take off from my culture, go into that very peculiar dichotomous culture in South America, with the Spaniards at the top and the Indians at the bottom, nothing in between, and sit at the feet of Oscar Chazo, the Brazilian master fleeing to Chile, with the uh, Chilean mistress and the ex-Brazilian uh, wife, with the children all mixed up together. It threw Cla she threw Claudio Naranjo out, native Chilean. His mistake was that he spoke Spanish. I didn't know any Spanish. So after three days of prayer, in which Oscar pulled his first fake on us, this is the most comfortable position, lying flat, and you're supposed to stay there for three, nine hours for three days, and pray for illumination, trans-illumination, which I did. But then I found out in 15 minutes that's the most uncomfortable position you could possibly think of. <laughs> Bores a hole into the septic, septic, septic uh, nucle nucleus, causes septicemia, destroys the pituitary, the pineal, and the cerebellum, and they call that higher states, plus 12. So at the end of three days, I went to Oscar and said, I'm going back to the States. I'm hungry for thrifty drugstores. <laughs> as soon as I got back, I went into a thrifty drugstore and went such a high that the roof came off. <laughs> three days later, I met Tony at Alan Watts lecture. And then three days after that, I met her at a party sitting on the floor. She was on acid. I was on acid. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of us knew it, though. <laughs> then he narcs here. We didn't know about this. <laughs> oh. Took one look at her and saw a shuddering through her 10,000 previous lives with her, all of them catastrophic. <laughs> so I decided this was the anastrophic time. We better start coming up. Strophisms had passed. Right, darling? Oh, Jonathan. <laughs> Alan died last year, I'm sorry. He was born 40 minutes ahead of me, so he had the beard. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs even as thee.
Tony Isimov. Hey, there's a question right in the front row. Can you remember what it's like to take a vacation from all this dedicated, far-out research and, you know, get up in the morning and not shoot up? Shoot up or shut up. I was, I was being interviewed. I was being interviewed just It's recently really. by, a, uh, by a gal. And she said to me, she said, what makes you the angriest about John? I said, I don't really get angry, but I do find myself yearning for trivia occasionally. <laughs> that answers your question. Well, that's true, but, but you see, there Next are... Next summer, I'll guarantee you, it's about $300 a month in that trivia store in Aspen. Yeah, but you know what really, what really sees me through this is that when John does come down, he will write it scientifically and as precisely as you've ever read. I don't know if you've read the human figures and all the rest of that stuff. I don't want to sound like his, sound like his fan, but uh, I am, and he, he can put together after his research some of the most incredible things that you've ever read. That's true. Thank you. Thank you. Fan spelled backwards is Nat, and that's enough. <laughs> Any other questions? About or in or with? <laughs> We have a friend, Mark Renner, who lived with a dolphin by the name of Dolly for three years. They fucked. <laughs> <laughs> writing a book on it. <laughs> Any of you knows a publisher will take it? Margaret Howe would never tell me if Peter and she had done the same thing. He tells some incredible stories about uh, <laughs> <laughs> about really, really relating to this dolphin over a three-year period, and um, I mean, sincerely falling in love with this dolphin, I mean, in a very alien way, certainly, but. <laughs> Into who? But it was really incredible, and uh, I don't think that we've even scratched the potential between. <laughs> between Trying to figure out how a dolphin can smoke pot. Well, I certainly don't need it. Seems. We have a rare avis by the name of Forrest Bird, whose plant is on the Palm Springs Airport. He makes dolphin respirators. So we're trying to sneak a little ketamine into that respirator and a little pot and a few other things. Maybe the dolphins will take it. We carried them through anesthesia with the respirator. Really works. Beautiful. If you ever have to be respired, be sure it's a bird machine. <laughs> There's a lot of dolphins fly. were being killed by not, you know, they're not understanding the breathing uh, apparatus. And that's one thing that uh, John made very clear to people about uh, their breathing and uh, Bird came up with this respirator. Our first respirator is I made out of a pipe about this long and about this big in diameter. And so you had to watch your watch and push it open in a tank of compressed air or oxygen. I think that the United Nations ought to get some power and introduce plants all over the world which change the nitrogen and the oxygen into N2O which is nitrous oxide or laughing gas. <laughs> It's the quickest way I know of eliminating war and everything else. Back to the void with N2O. Yes. Uh, I don't know. We're going back to nitrous later, as soon as we run out of ketamine. <laughs> Through a happy bird. Uh, I think it's similar. Uh, I would say that if you had to describe the differences Uh, the hallucinogens, I, I always like to describe them with frequencies, so that you could say that the LSD and the psilocybin and things like that are here. And uh, ketamine is sort of a well of neutrality. So you're sort of down here. So it's a disassociation anesthetic, right? So you really can't... You're not allowed to go positive. You can't have an orgasm. But if you work hard, you can do it. Well, yeah, you have to kind of work hard at associating with the body. Or a negative trip, you have to work hard with it. So you can actually slowly see how your thought processes work. 
and you know how you think because it's just the moment is so stretched and it's valuable in that sense but uh, when you're thinking Careful about about you're pre-programming the whole audience <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm trying to show. You may get some captive MDs to help them. That it is uh, a tool, and that's bathroom. all. You know, tools are neutral, and how, of course, we use them. I certainly don't think you should do anything to excess. Between the FDA, the Nazis, and Larry, we're having a hard time. Yes. Yeah. Is this stuff accumulative? No one knows. He's already you go been up hospital. and down. If you take another one here, you go up, and then you come down, but you're still higher. You can keep on doing this until finally you're up where you started. Way up here. Does that mean that you need to be using the needle every hour? Yeah, that needle I don't No, like. well, the thing is, <laughs> if more and more people are going to be using this, or Tried become, everywhere. you know, accustomed to using this in their research, no oh, one yeah. knows. <laughs> he was in the hospital with the, ca uh, and no one would even read the literature on ketamine. You think we'd get back into Aspen next summer? I doubt it. I doubt it very much. Yes, okay. boss. What's your goal in all this? Goal? <laughs> goal, games, means, charisma. Cock a doodle doo. I don't, don't think. I don't think. The little rooster, the penis that came into our universe and went out again. He's a check. The intruder. I don't know how many big bang and went you know, pop. but very few of them really have goals. They're into examining uh, what's happening, not because they really have the goal to, you know, uh, they just, they're just curious, and they're, they have to work in the frontiers. I and why, it. I don't really know. When the next time. I really don't, you know, but it's, it's a fact that there are some people that are constantly examining in the frontiers, and... Uh, John's life is, you know, he's been doing that all the time. Try to look at a frontier easily. Put your nose and your forehead against a mirror and do a psychops operation. You look at both your eyes, they become one. And you look at the center of that eye, the eye of God, and away you go. Now, on ketamine, you can do this. I did it in the United Airlines flight from Monterey. <laughs> Monterey to Los Angeles. <laughs> the pilot started describing Kahootek, where it was. I turned on my inside radar, watched Kahootek. The plane was turned around. We had to land at Burbank. They closed down the LA airport. Nine airliners were not allowed to enter that night. The next day, there was a horrible crash on the runway. We got home by means of taxi and uh, bus. It's a very tragic sort of an affair. Now, the problem was, was I the cause? Was I involved in a network system? Was I in the quantum electrodynamics of the universe? Or what? I don't know. Ask Dick Feynman. <laughs> He'll do it on the blackboard for you. Do you know of anyone that has used this in the state of depression? No, I haven't. Uh, I don't advise data. it now. I'm I've been trying to do research on that, but she won't let me. That depression bit gets her. She gets the depression, I get the ketamine. <laughs> yeah. Are you trying any other non-chemically induced paths to consciousness? Chogyam, Rinpoche, Trungpa, over at Fort Collins, Boulder. There's a group over there. One of his disciples, we waited an hour and 15 minutes to hear his speech. He had a six pack of 45 coal under his. <laughs> I asked him what are the levels of consciousness. He said they're 18 in Buddhism. That stopped the conversation. He said, liberation is freedom from the spiritual path. I couldn't agree more. The void is always with you. Just good as Buddha said, Get down inside deep and turn around, and you'll be there. That's Gracie. She knows. Yes? What kind of experiments are you doing now? I don't do experiments anymore. I do experiences. And I let them write themselves down. I finally learned how to do nothing and get paid for it. I had everybody else write the books. Sure. <laughs> 
future caught on, they're paying us enormous sums of money. We hope. <laughs> Bank of America ought to know about that. Yes. Can you affect things there? As Patanjali said, 400 B.C., Janma Asaudi Mantra Tapa Samadhi Sihaya. The psychic powers are given by birth, by light-containing herbs, by the power of words, by the power of austerities, by the power of trance. I like the trance system, but I'm stuck on a Saudi. The light-containing herbs, my molecular configuration, the quantum mechanic observer operator within my own brain. If he studies himself and starts vibrating at the right frequencies, he gets into resonance the Kuru Tech and the rest of the universe, and away he goes. Can you affect things there? Absolutely and relatively, of course. <laughs> Slippery, aren't I? It isn't me, of course, the cosmic computer. Have you actually done that? I just did. Kuru Tech and the airplane. But you said you didn't know. Of course. I always say that. That's an out. <laughs> it saves even hell, but I've been in hell anyway. I paid my debt. I had migraine for 50 years. A friend of ours, so-called, recently wrote up the scoundrels in the spiritual trip, including myself, and he said, Lily has a program of migraine in his biocomputer. and so on, etc. As been said by Gorsipsky, much better than I do. All right, I want to take it one more step. Do you make a decision to use such powers for good or evil, as you talked about good and evil? You dissolve the dichotomies, you take evil slash good, and cross out each one across, and you come to D. D is kind of an indeterminate constant in the universe, H new, H new of consciousness is the next step. As soon as we do that one, we can create and destroy at will. Yes? I would like it if you would comment on the development of new vocabulary in our language. You know, I, I've been working uh, a lot with the young people, and I, I'm so interested in the language that's developed because I think the frequency is different. It's starting to change. So because of that, they need a shorter, uh, shorter way of saying things. So they've developed the language, I think, practically because of the need, first the need and then the language. And I'm very interested in that. And John, um, before the ketamine research, worked on it extensively. And uh, a new book is coming out that I really do think is a total winner. And it's called... Uh, the science of belief. Simulations of God. So what he's done is he's, he's taken, um, you know, various belief systems and, uh, you know, he uses words in a different way. I don't think too many people, for example, examine their own belief system. They just automatically take it for granted and they're on these tape loops of believing that God is whatever, money, beauty, uh, wisdom, whatever. And I find that uh, just even using words like meta-programming, which I, I really uh, rejected immediately because my, my whole feeling about, um, you know, an artist and, you know, organic and all those things. So as soon as I started hearing the computer yeah. terms, I, I thought, oh, gosh, they sound so, uh, so unfeeling somehow. But after uh, I started listening to this uh, for a long length of time, I thought it was a very economical way of thinking. So that when people do have a metaprogrammic way of thinking, you, you put aside lots and lots of sort of garbage, you might call it, uh, if you garbage in, garbage if you're out. going to put a value judgment on it. <laughs> Not that it makes that much difference, but you do have the choice then to think metaprogrammically. And I find it very useful. So I'm interested in language, and I'm interested in, uh, in how these languages are developed. Garb meaning clothing, and age meaning age. You know. Yes. What was the name of that book? Simulation of God, the Science of Belief. Then we have a second book. Simon Schuster paying us a lot of money for both these books. It's called The Dyadic Cyclone. That's her.
<laughs> She's writing that one to help a lot of people. Then there's another book coming out, a tank, a tank head training manual, <laughs> <laughs> written by myself and a lot of collaborators, about 200, and a lot of molecules. It'll help too. A lot of voids. Then there's another one that's written by the void called The Ultimate Simulation. One <laughs> by 300 blank pages. That's right. That's what that'll be, the blank pages. But he really does work. <laughs> there's so much fun that the smoke and fire around me seems to heat up Southern California and keep it like a desert. Oh, wow. You see the skiing ahead of me. The damn snow melts about six feet a second. <laughs> just a tunnel. You're just a holographic tunnel, my dear. Yes? So glad you brought a hologram. My experience with uh, Ketelar has not been one of, uh, let's say, wanting to get back to that space. I think that, that Ketelar is a, it's called disassociation. So a lot of people have had what they call emergent symptoms when they come out of the anesthetic. And this Especially is how we got into in Because they wrote about these emergent symptoms, and we thought, wow, they sound psychedelic. And uh, very often, being in that neutral state, is a, it, it's close to a death-like kind of uh, trip for me. I'm speaking from my experience. And um, I could imagine that that would... Um, would be close to this dream kind of thing. We all well are an introduction to the substance to a uh, acid-headed Esalen by the name of Dr. Craig Enright, MD, who in his internship took it and made this discovery. Then he went through the PDR and discovered several others. All you have to do is look for psychological side effects and then take about a hundredth of the dose that is recommended for the so-called therapeutic effect, and away you go. Legal as hell. Without Nixon taping. John comes from a school of uh, thought or schooling where he believes that a, a doctor should work on himself before uh, he uses any of these things on J.B.S. Haldane in England started this. My teacher was H. Cuthbert Bassett, who smoked too much and died of heart attack at Land's End, England, on his way back home. He threaded thermocouples up his jugular into his brain to find out the brain temperature. He cut off his prepus in a hot, cold bath and mapping the end organs for sensation of heat and cold and pain and then did the histology on it. Uh, nobody had to do that experiment twice, <laughs> especially the females. And this is the tradition from which I come. It's a modern gothic horror story from a <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein type of laboratory out of Caltech through Dartmouth to uh, Uni University of Pennsylvania and the United States Public Health Service. Irish uh, drama, too, you know, drama. F. Scott Irish Fitzgerald. Drama. <laughs> yes. This awareness of other planetary control, I wanted to know in your ketamine thing, do you have consistency coming back to that experience, and do you have certainty about that? When they insist. It's, it's their option. Sometimes I do what I call a permission connection program. Please, may I have permission to make connection with your network? And bang, I'm in it. I don't need ketamine. If the prayer is good enough, I don't need ketamine in the tank to do this. And as Richard Feynman found when he went in the tank for 12 hours or so, he was down by his navel and saw his nose there. <laughs> Figured he didn't need, a, didn't need a nose or a navel. Got out of his body after talking to Baba Ram Das, who taught him the Buddhist southern tradition of breathing, paying attention to what happens right here at the end of your nose. So ketamines are not needed. Yes? Besides programming and pre-programming, what other things do you have to prevent permapsychosis? Permapsychosis is a gift of God. <laughs> best way I know it is to get supported. So you better pick your place. Diet can be poor. Living conditions are horrible and the excrement uh, smells pretty badly. But if you get, say, at Menninger's, They'll teach you how to act as if you're not in psychosis while wandering around looking as if you are. 
Let's see the logic here. Five values. And zip. Five over here, real. Five over here, and zip. That left side. You know, that's an interesting logic system to, to look into. And G. Spencer Brown, who wrote this book called Laws of Form, a uh, mathematician uh, in, at Cambridge. Sitting in James Key, the only two can play this game. Footnote one is where you start. Footnote one, not footnote zero. Five levels of eternity. We brought him over here to Esalen, and uh, we had a conference where he introduced this. And it, and it was really fascinating. Of course, he has patented some of his theories, and one of them I enjoyed very much and used a lot myself, and he calls that flippity. And uh, it's used in computers, and I often see people and myself in this kind of flippity when you can't make a decision. And you go, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? And of course, then the third thing takes you out of flippity. And... Um, I enjoyed meeting him very much. He was like an exotic bird who... Uh, a mouse from Cambridge. Well, he was a little frightened of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you'll find, um, as a lot of people have found, that book to be incredibly stimulating. He uses way. seven backwards for his symbol. And seven backwards is not only an operator, it's a signal. If you feed the signal through the operator, it generates a series of sevens and zeros infinitely called the flippity. If you get into the state, you can't make up your mind whether you're going to do or not do whatever it is, good, evil, and so forth. As soon as you realize this, you can go to the void and shut the whole thing off and become quite quiet and live on the side of Mount Whitney with uh, Frank and Merrill Wolf at 6,000 feet or your Maury Knox here at 8,000. It's very simple. You can stand flippity in Aspen no trouble whatsoever, <laughs> especially if you buy trivia. <laughs> or another way of saying is that you just develop the observer and you, you're watching the flippity. So then you can uh, you have the choice of either identifying with it or realizing that it can go on as a system separate from the observer. And this, of course, uh, you can look at very closely in the tank because you're not computing gravity and or sound or light, you can watch these thought processes in in a very peculiar way. And Always it's, as if. Yeah, it's as if you can identify with it or you because you have the energy it seems. If you identify it's not as if. Well, you, yeah, all right. So Why? you're either identifying or you're not identifying, but you're watching what the thought process and how you identify and where you have the way choice. back there. I wanted to know if you're going to do anything more with your dolphin friends. Yes. Yeah. As soon as we get enough money in, in a place or several places, enough interested youngsters, families, we'll do it. We'll help them. It's just starting to come together as a matter of fact. Michael, what's his name? Michael? Greenwood. Greenwood, who used to be in the Navy. He was trying to introduce my, na my ideas to the Navy. The whole thing started when... William McLean, Ph.D., came down, he invented the Sidewinder missile back in the 40s, came down and spent three weeks with me in Florida. He said, what's in all this? So we showed him. He immediately went back and put $80,000 a year out of his $80 million a year budget into dolphins at Point Magoo, California. An old enemy of mine was hired to take care of the dolphins. <laughs> the only enemy I have, apparently. <laughs> And then a friend of mine started teaching the dolphins how to use a machine called the transphonimator, which was written up in analog science fiction. His name was Bateau, and he came along so far that he found the dolphins would mimic. This thing would change human vowel sounds into dolphin whistles and vice versa. So you'd listen to this thing and you'd hear yow, and the dolphin would go over and get a fish in that corner. You'd hear you, and he'd go around that corner, and so on, up and down and around sideways. It was too successful, so Bateau was done away with by the CIA and the surf at Honolulu with a fake heart attack. And they used this in the day of the dolphin. How many more lies can I tell them? <laughs> Twelve million dollars worth. We're suing them. Have you ever cross-referenced with Carlos Castaneda? No. 
He's got a PowerPoint in Malibu Hills. We've got a PowerPoint down the coast from. You think there'll probably be a lava connection pretty soon. <laughs> He's coming up to use the tank. He was up there recently. We were not able to get back in time. But he's uh, very interested in using that. His big sure. smoke is a death trip, death trip. Whatever happens if you get in the tank with strength, without any kind of stuff. Well, most I people do. You to do it. Most people do. I mean, oh, yeah, all the research we do, we are doing. Uh, Burgess yeah. Meredith came out and said a great piece. Matter Daniel matter. Ellsberg came out and said nothing happened. See, you're much better off. I mean, say you were, <laughs> no were going to use something. You were going to use a chemical. Uh, you're much better off not using one to begin with, certainly, because you have a base to compare. But you don't need anything. I mean, there's no reason, unless you're doing research. No, no reason. Well, it is. Much but you're still computing gravity unless you're weightless. See, when you're free here you're weightless, and a gravitation equal potential. It's, it's just amazing what the difference in your meditation. It's so much faster that, for example, uh, I had a claustrophobic uh, kind of thing happen to me the first time I got in. But I got there so fast because, uh, because I was weightless and I was not computing gravity and sound and light that I was in the terror space before I even had a chance to build up uh, you know, sort of a resistance to it. And I, I was so thankful that I experienced it because I realized it was sort of sitting someplace and I didn't even know I was claustrophobic. Do you have migraines, and have you considered biofeedback? I tried biofeedback with Green Manningers, the uh, hands bit, and I must admit I didn't try it hard enough. So I was much more interested in far out space and quite dramatic stuff. So that biofeedback's kind of garbage to the brain and all that sort of thing. I spent 20 years on that, putting electrodes in heads of things other than myself. My John, analyst wouldn't let me put the John probably the mapped the brain like it has never been mapped uh, by anyone in the world, according to Jolly West at UCLA. Uh, which is, <laughs> he worked on a brain for 20 years and uh, did a very, very extensive mapping of where the systems in the brain are located. I finally realized that's what I use in the tank, the brain maps. Where I'm living and what's excited and what isn't, what's positive, what's negative, and so on. Yes. You said when you were coming back from the experience that you see certain spheres of thought that are necessary for reality. Right. right. A non -ordinary, an ordinary reality. reality. I'd like to ask you about the seeing. At that time, are you seeing it or are you being seen? You're asking where the observer is as you're observing. Yeah. Well, you're working in the interface. So First, that, the observer is slowly coming back looking at all this. Right. And he gets trapped in it and identifies. Look in the golf compartment, reads the directions, identifies him. <laughs> runs the vehicle. So if you're out, you're, you're, you're part, you're, you are the universe, or you are the universal consciousness, or you are the squiggles. I call it squiggles and giggles because it's just so funny when you first experience that because you realize that the whole thing is pulsating and it's just a bunch of patterns. And you are those patterns. I, I think that uh, we're just beginning to make maps of, the, of, of the territories. So that, of course, you get trapped and you, you say, okay, now I'm back to this reality. I'm going to try to remember what it was like when I was in the other reality. And I, I, I do it by trying to keep a hole in the attic, so to speak, so that I can keep an antenna in that reality and yet function and cook and do my planet side trip, <laughs> you know, while I have this antenna in, in this uh, attic. Now, I, can, I think that the ideal balance game is when you have all these working all at the same time, that there's no separation. Yeah, and, I, and we do. It's just that we forget that we have. You're much, much better off just doing this with meditation because it's a slower way, it's a, it's a more lasting way, um, and I certainly would recommend $500 will tell you our secret. We give you a key, Playboy Club type key, you stick the key in the void and turn it, and there you are. $500, please. It, it actually can be done, of course, very quickly. I mean, some people that are very ill, for example, uh, are there in a, in a moment. With no preparation, no meditation. She gave all our keys to Werner Earhart. 
<laughs> I think whenever you look at any of these systems, I think you, for example, Eureka is a pyramid system. You have Oscar Chazo who gets the word... Uh, dragon Lady. Don't forget the Dragon Lady. Yeah, Oscar Chazo and the Dragon Lady. Uh, gets the, he gets the word of God, Barakah, or whatever he, he calls it, and then that goes to the ring or the temple, and then they give the word to the teachers, and you have this pyramid thing. Uh, I, I, I think it's more like a religion, and uh, I don't believe in any system that uses fear. Uh, you'll notice in I the... I highly recommend it. I mean, Oscar went on and on about... As you can see, I'm stuck with it. ...crystallization of the ego and the big toe for all eternity. She's New York one, I'm Chile one. Now, I, I can't go along with a system that uses that. See the evolution? Uh, Changed again. It's down here at Carbondale. It's my ex-wife. John, would you let ex me finish this, please? <laughs> Johnny Brewer and Mary Lilly. S is a different kind of system. It's more sort of like for the Western mind, because, Voice you know, club. they give you something. <laughs> The preceding program is copyright 2000, Sound Photosynthesis. For more information or to order a catalog of similar recordings, video and audio, you can phone us at area code 415-409-3220. Send a request to P.O. Box 2111, Mill Valley, California, 94942. Or you can visit our webpage at www.sound.photosynthesis.com.